Hey, welcome to Tavern Keeper's Item Workshop. I'm Seth, and today I'm gonna go over some of the basics of using design mode, and then we'll go step by step in how you can make this creepy, cute mimic chest. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is redesign this bar. And the bar is a functional piece of furniture that your staff come and serve drinks at. We wanna customize what it looks like, but we still want it to work in the game. So to get started, we're gonna open design mode. You can hit T or click here. So let's replace this bar top with something nicer, like uh, this lumber panel. And as I go to place it, you'll notice these hotkeys pop up. I really encourage you to learn those. They'll help you decorate so much easier and faster. So I placed it and it's sticking up higher than the original bar top. So I want to sink it down. I'm going to click it. And now this thing called a gizmo pops up that will let me really accurately place it. And that's good. Uh, now, I think I want to scale it a little wider, so I'm going to click here for the scale tool. Nice. I could also use the G hotkey to toggle between these two tools. I use that hotkey more than any other. So now the original bar model is visually clashing and I want to turn it off. I could do that by exiting design mode with escape key, select the bar, right click, and turn off the model. So a floating bar top is cool, but let's add some supports. Just something simple like uh, maybe a barrel. Wow, this one is way too big. Um, so I could hit tab to switch between snapping points. Every piece in design mode has a couple logically placed snapping points that make it easier to place. And I'm gonna scale it down with click drag down. Now the logical thing here would be to place this under the bar top, but if you notice, there's no green outline. So if I do that, it's going to treat it like a, a new template and these won't be associated with each other. So if you go to save it, you're, you're not gonna get everything. If I wanna link it to this piece, I can hit equal and then just mouse over whatever I want to associate it with. Cool. Another way to get to that would be right click or use this uh, three dot menu. Oh, and one last really useful tip. If you have an active template, which you'll know by seeing this green outline, if you go to place another piece now and you see this green dotted line, that means it's still associated with that template, even though they're not touching, which can be really helpful. If you go too far away, it will treat it as a new template. All right, I think we just need one more barrel to support this bar. So let's select it and control D to duplicate. Slide it over. You could also use the clone tool right here or the X hotkey. The difference is clone tool will give you snapping back and control D keeps the gizmo active. So now I'm gonna select both of these by holding control, click, Okay, I'm happy with this and I'm ready to save it. We call custom designs like this templates and there are two kinds. There's furniture, which something functional like the bar or the potbelly stove are always that. Decorations could also be furniture, but what it means is it can only be placed on the floor or against the wall. Whereas decoration templates like this one could be placed anywhere, but these are always only decorative. And the decorative furniture you can find in the build menu in decorative. Another feature, you'll notice this blue wireframe box that will block pathfinding. And you can access that by selecting right click and you can turn it on and off. And when you save it, it will remember that. It's important to remember that what mode you are in will determine what kind of template you save. So if I go into design mode, and I double click to select all these pieces, right click, save as design mode template, and we can just name it and choose where it will show up in the UI. I want standalone templates and objects, save and share. And you could send this code to friends and they can import it in their game, which is really cool. So now I just click templates and here it is. 
And again, this is a decorative template, so I can place it anywhere, but it's only decorative. There's no functionality. If I want to save it as furniture template, then I just exit design mode, select it, right click, save as furniture template. And let's make it a variant of the bar counter. And if I go in the bar counter, there it is. All right, time to make the mimic chest. Let's open design mode. And we want a chest, so let's look in objects, containers. And there's a few options here. Uh, these arrows again mean that there are more pieces. And this is a template of the top and the bottom, so I'm gonna grab that one and place it. Now to open it, I'm gonna select it open the hierarchy and since it was a template it automatically came in this group so I'm going to expand that select the top and open it now I want to make these red gums but we didn't make gums for players explicitly so I'm gonna to have to get a little creative I know in masonry there's some um, lumpy shapes like this but they're not the right color so I'm going to turn them red with this paintbrush and uh, yeah, there's also several variants of this particular piece so I can keep it from getting repetitious. And instead of having to go down to the menu to access this variants, I can hit J or K to cycle between them, which is a lot more convenient. Sometimes snapping is maybe a little less precise, so I like to select things and Control D use the gizmo you'll notice here the gizmo is rotated to match the piece it's it's like each piece has its own memory of its rotation and you call that local space if you wanted this gizmo to point perfectly up down left right that kind of thing just click here and we call this world space since it's oriented to the world it can be quite handy and i flip between them a lot Alright, now I need these teeth, and those are in ceramic, or some spiky things, yeah this, but I need to make them white, so do that. Tweak them a little bit, give them some character, leave that one big. Cool. Now I could group these to make selecting them again later easier. So I'm going to hold control and then click. And if I want to be able to change the color of a bunch of pieces later, I could keep all those in the same group. And as long as they're the same type, they'll be able to recolor. So control G and they're grouped. Same for these. And let's grab both of those. They're sticking out a bit, so I'm gonna sink it in. And then I want to make a copy of all of that and then flip it upside down. So I'm gonna control D, move it. And if I wanna rotate it perfectly, I could turn on rotation snapping. And uh, all of these buttons have tooltips if you want to read more of the details on how they work and if you want to go even further you can check out the design the handbook and there's the design mode section there's lots of tips and tricks in here it's really handy the rotation snapping is enabled so i can perfectly flip it nice all right, time for the eyeballs. So let's go to nature, animal. And for the eyelid, there's a hemisphere in shapes that works pretty well. Just gotta get it placed. Oh, 
Oh yeah, so one thing I want to point out. I move the camera around quite a lot while designing. It really helps with figuring out where everything is and how to position pieces well. And a really important feature is if you middle click on anything, it changes the orbit target to where you clicked. So you can then spin the camera around that point, you can zoom way in, and yeah, it's really useful for focusing. If you hold the right mouse button and drag it around, it will move that orbit point. And it takes a little bit of practice to get the hang of it, but it will make designing a much nicer experience. All right, let's set the color to red. Then we can select both of these, duplicate, and set to world space to easily slide it over. Do it again. This one's looking real happy, maybe a little derpy. Great. Okay, the last piece we need is a tongue, and we don't have a tongue exactly, so we'll have to get creative again. I do know we have a towel dragon, which has this curvy pink tail that'll work really well. And again, you can see that green dotted line going to it, so it will be associated with the template even though it's not touching. Let's flip it. a little bit and yeah okay quick note i want you to know that it's okay to make mistakes and that's because we've got the undo feature so if you were placing a tooth and you went burp oh no well i could just click this or Control z and once i'm undone i can redo with Control y I'm happy with this goofy looking chest and I want to save it. So I can click it, right click, save as furniture template. Since I'm not in design mode, it'll save as furniture inside of the build menu in decorative. One thing before I do that, you'll notice this blue crosshair. That's the center of a decoration furniture template. So if I had all this stuff and I somehow positioned it far away from this, then if I make it a furniture template and I start trying to place it, it's a little bit awkward. So it's good to notice that and keep it in mind. It's useful if you made like a really big decoration and you're trying to allow players to place it in the best way. So we're just going to put that back. And I can select it. Maybe I'll tell it to block, stop characters from walking through it. Save. And left click drag to position this the best. Derpy chest. Save and decoration templates. Could share this code with friends. And it should be right here. Okay, lastly, I want to show you some variants that I made to demonstrate that you can accomplish the same visual goals a lot of different ways if you just get creative with the pieces. So say this purple tongue right here, I went to textiles and it's actually this two point drape that I colored purple, placed it, rotated a few times, and I think it turned out really good for a tongue. And then this one is object shapes and it's an octagon that I flattened, placed it, rotated it, placed another one, and so on. And then to get this like reptilian eye, I got a hemisphere, and I just flattened it, and I stuck it inside of the regular eyeball. It's good to think of this as playing with building blocks, because with our low poly art style, you can imagine different materials based on how you use the pieces. Also, we've got an exciting full color picker feature in development that's going to really unlock the potential for your designs. I hope this gets you started and thank you so much for watching.